So as times of uncertainty continue to increase, and they are and they will, you need to have a vibrant heart fueled by a clear and consistent prayer life so that you can stay connected to Christ no matter what may come. And you need to be able to train your disciples to do the same. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 prayers I've been praying for the last 10 years and I believe has really strengthened my heart because I'm really praying the Bible. So I'm going to share with you these 10 prayers from the Bible that you can train your disciples in. That's coming up. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Multiplying Disciples channel. My name is Mark, and here on the Multiplying Disciples channel, we give you simple tools, we give you insights and principles, and we help you to learn how to go from loss to leader and to train others to go from loss to leader, uh, multiplying disciples, leaders, and churches until there is no place left. And as we all know, it doesn't take a genius or somebody with great wisdom to see, but we are in a time of increasing uncertainty. And that's happening in every level. That's happening geopolitically. That's happening uh, in the environment. That's happening socially. That's happening uh, economically. You can go on through the list. There's a lot of ways in which the world is shaking. And so this is the time that Isaiah 60, Arise and Shine, but how do we do that? How do we go from that place of uh, of living in the midst of this world, being not of it, but being in it and rising and shining? Well, it requires our hearts to be rooted and grounded in the truth and to be shining brightly from that place of identity and connected to God. So uh, there are 10 prayers that I've been praying for the last 10 years, and it spells this acronym fellowship, F-E-L-L-O-W-S-H-I-P. And so in uh, this video, I want to unpack these 10 things. And I've got a whole uh, list here that goes all the way down um, that I'm going to include in, um, uh, in, in the description below. But first of all, I'm going to recite them from memory so that you know that this really has been in me. And that is this, this acronym fellowship, fear of the Lord, endurance, the love of God, the light of his glory, one thing focus, uh, to be counted worthy or worthy uh, of our calling, to have speech that is um, pure, to have humility, insight unto intimacy, and then finally, peace and joy. So all of that together spells fellowship. Might feel long and overwhelming, but as you spend time with this, all of this is really key for us growing in a vibrant heart, but also growing in the wisdom of God and the gifts of God that he's called us to walk in so that we can be effective as those that arise and shine and that we can train our disciples leaders, churches to do the same. So I'm going to share with you each of these uh, from uh, these notes that I've got in the description below. And then uh, I'll share with you at the end uh, some reasons why I think this is so critical right now. So fear of the Lord. You know, uh, there is this passage in I, a, a, Psalm 86, 11. This is the one that I pray the most when it comes to fear of the Lord. God, would you give me an undivided heart? Meaning that God, any way that my heart is going after other things, give me an undivided heart to fear your name. And so the fear of the Lord is a gift, and I want to have that. And so I pray this from that Psalm 86, 11. So that's fear of the Lord. Endurance. I pray from Colossians 1, 11 most often, being strengthened with all power that you may have great endurance and patience. And pray, Lord, would you come and strengthen my heart so that I may walk in all endurance and patience. Okay, so love. And my favorite one here, uh, I'm not sure if it's actually even on this list, but I, I love to pray from uh, Ephesians 3, that God would root and ground my heart in love as I know the truth of Christ. Uh, there's a lot of powerful prayers on love. The other one, Philippians 1, 9, that my, my love would abound still more and more. So I pray that out to the Lord, just praying back to him what's already in his word on the topic of love. So let's see, light of glory. Um, I pray around this topic of light of glory. Uh, most often I will pray, uh, let's see, of these, I most pr often pray Psalm 80, verse three, restore so God, make your face to shine upon us. So we want to carry the glory of God. And uh, John 1 tells us that Jesus came to bear that glory and show it to others. But that means that we've got to ask God, would you come and shine your glory on me? Come and make your name known to me so that I may be a carrier of your glory. Uh, Moses prayed a similar prayer. Don't lead us up here unless... Uh, your spirit goes with us and the glory of God resting on him. So I pray for the light of glory to rest on me. One thing, focus. 
Uh, and that's, of course, Psalm 27, 4 uh, for, for O in this acronym. And that's that God uh, would give me a, a one thing focus the way that he gave to David. And uh, he said, one thing I ask of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. So, Lord, did you give me a one thing focus? Again, this goes back to that fear of the Lord. Give me an undivided heart that I would be fear your name and I would be focused on you. So one thing focus. W, count me worthy. And so uh, let's see, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1.11. So we constantly pray that God may count you worthy of his calling. I want to be counted worthy of my calling. So Lord, do whatever it takes to form me into the kind of man or maybe a woman, a kind of woman that God can use in the calling that he has on your life. So count me worthy. Okay, so that's W. And then speech. Of course, the Lord wants to uh, use us, but it requires us to live in such a way that we are unstained by the world. And so speech is a huge part of that. And so I pray this pretty regularly that God would uh, bind my lips from saying unpleasing and unwholesome things. And uh, of course, this is James uh, 3, 2 is the one I pray the most. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man able to keep his whole body in check. So just praying, Lord, would you come and uh, give me the grace to restrain the things inside of me, uh, my the, the flesh inside of me to focus on you and also including my lips as I speak to focus on you and speak for things that build up and are profitable to others. H is for humility. Uh, it takes a courageous person to pray for humility, right? Um, but Jesus said, uh, take my yoke, learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart. So Lord, would you cause me to be humble in heart the way that Jesus was humble in heart and not to be uh, self-effacing or just like uh, the world's version of humility, which is weak, but instead to be in agreement with what you say, God, agreement with your identity. That's where the power lies in agreeing with him uh, in that place of humility. So uh, that's humility. I is insight unto intimacy. So I love this prayer. I pray from Ephesians 1, 17, most often here that Lord, the Lord would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And in that place that he would open my eyes to see him on the throne and to see from his perspective. So Ephesians 1 is one of my favorite prayers in the whole Bible. That's the prayer for insight unto intimacy. Okay, so uh, that just leaves P, I think. And so that's where we pray for peace and joy. And where is it? Romans 15, of course. I pray that I pray this most often that may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So praying that God would pour out his peace and joy in us as we trust in him and that that would begin to overflow out of us. So uh, that's a fast run through of fellowship, this acronym and giving you one passage for each of those. Now, there's a lot of ways that we could break all of that down. And, and uh, I would encourage you to do that with your disciple and to, to give them this PDF that uh, I'm going through with you. But at the end of the day, why this is so critical is God wants us to go and, and shine forth his light. But it really does mean that we are rooted and grounded in the truth inside of us. And that comes through prayer. And James, book of James says, we have not because we don't ask. And we ask, we don't ask according to his will. So this is his will. This is what's in the Bible. And what we can do most safely and effectively when we pray is to pray the Bible back to God. He wants to uh, give us the things that he's written in his word. So we just pray back to him what it already says. And then he wants to give us what's written in his word. So I just encourage you to begin to pray fellowship. And it's quite easy to remember that after you spend a little bit of time with it and then begin to train your disciple to pray fellowship. And this gives you a, a clear framework for how to engage with God in prayer in a simple way. And he may cause you to pause on one of these letters and spend the whole time on that or spend the whole time on a couple of these letters instead of going through all of them. But uh, it gives you a framework, gives you a launch point into, Lord, what do you what do you want to give to me and, and set me up with in my heart and in the communities that I lead, the disciples that I lead, so that they can thrive and be that light in these times of darkness. So hope that's helpful for you. Again, check out the description below where there is this PDF. This has just been barely touching the surface of what's in here in terms of the, the prayers for each section and how effective and helpful this can be. So check it out, read through it, and not just read through it, but begin to use this in your prayer life so that you can have that vibrant heart and you can train your disciples to do the same. All right, that's it for today. I know that was a fire hydrant, and make sure you dig into the, the PDF below to really get the most out of this, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Much love.